Welcome to this week's Wednesday craft video. I will be showing you how to make your own Harry Potter Quidditch cloche. This is a design that I saw on Pinterest a long time ago and knew I wanted to find a way to make a budget-friendly version for our September events focused on Harry Potter. So I'm going to walk you through all of what your kit includes and the other supplies you are going to need to complete this project and then show you step by step how I created my own. So first up, in your kit you have one plastic cloche. You're going to remove all of the tape. Some of your supplies are inside your dome, the cardboard's taped on the bottom, just to save on some packaging materials. So go ahead and remove this, remove all your tape, and separate all your supplies. You will have three key rings, one piece of floral wire, a piece of air dry clay in the little container. If your clay is starting to dry out or you find it crumbly to the touch, add a little water and work it between your fingers to help bring back some of that moisture to make it easier to work with, a little more pliable. Next, you have a cardboard square, a printout of golden snitch wings, and a moss square. You will also need Elmer's glue or any other kind of white glue or a Mod Podge, a hot glue gun, paints. I used a gold and a bronze for my project. A pencil, and scissors. Regular scissors will work for this project. If you have heavier duty scissors to save a little work on your hands, I'd recommend using those too. And then last but not least, you're also going to need a little bit of patience. There are a few steps to this project. There's some drying time overnight involved. And so with that, this project is not going to be completed super quick, but the end result, I hope you'll agree, is completely worth it. So let's get started. So I'm going to move everything out of my way that I don't need at the moment. And we're going to start with our floral wire and our three keychain rings. And then we'll be using our clay next. So to start, if you know anything about Quidditch, the three hoops are at different size points. So there's like a smaller, a taller, and a mid-height. So we're going to use our floral wire to create those heights. So what I did is just kind of eyeballed where about a third of the way is for my wire. And just folded it over a little bit. And then I added a little length to the end and then rounded it again. So you end up with your smallest piece, your mid-sized piece, and then your longest piece. And then I just snip my wire at these three, two points to create the three strips. So once I've done that, and I have my strips, then you can focus on your keychain rings and wrapping the floral wire around the keychain ring. So my preference was the little gap between where you would actually like add a key on is where I connected my wire. So putting the wire through the ring about halfway, I'm just going to tightly Fold the wire against the ring. And then loop one end of the wire through the ring. Because I wrapped the ring three times with my wire. And it's okay to bend this. So it's pretty flexible. So bent it around three times. And then just gave a little pinch two wires. Okay. 
And so you're going to find that your ring is still a little floppy, not super, super sturdy, and that's where the air dry clay is going to come into play. So here's my first one. This is going to be my shortest, um, my, actually my medium height one. So I'm just going to go ahead and wrap the wire around the base a little bit to give a little extra sturdiness. And then I'm going to leave the two ends some distance, about an inch or so, not wrapped. This is going to allow me to put these through the cardboard base and separate the wires to create a little sturdiness for these to stand up in our project. So there's our medium height. And I would do the same thing for our tallest height. depending on how you wrapped it with your wire. We just want a little more height from our stopping point for our tallest one, our medium one, and then our lowest one. And then next comes the messier part. Once we have our three rings wrapped, we're gonna take our air dry clay and we're going to give it a little workout in your hands to warm it up, to make it more pliable. Again, if yours feels a little dried out from sitting in the package kit, always add a little bit of water to it and just work that water in to make it nice and soft. If you find that it's cracking, um, flaking off onto your work surface, you might need to add a little water to make it easier to do this next step. So the first thing that I did is just take off a little piece and form a ball. So that's a little bigger than I want it to be. Take a little clay off. So this little ball of clay is going to become my golden snitch. And you can make your snitch in two ways. One way is to keep um, it perfectly 3D. So you can make, form your ball, you can then slice your ball in half, add the wings to the middle of it, and glue it all together. Or the easier way is to just cut your ball in half. You can do that with your scissors. You can do that with a knife if you have one nearby. And just reform this into a little ball. And then glue your wings to the back of it. So your paper wings, I just cut out close. It's to save you from having to create wings out of clay. If you prefer to do that, by all means. But I thought the printout would be a nice little shortcut. But it still looks pretty good in the final spot, finished product. So if you want to do 3D, you're going to want to save both halves. To put them back together. To have your wings in between. Or you can just save one half. Put the rest of the clay back in with your mix and then attach your wings on this and just have them lay flat in your cloche, which is what I did. So mine is only half a ball and not the full ball with the wings. And I like the look of the way it laid nicely on my grass. So I'm going to lay that setting aside, let that air dry. And um, I let my clay dry overnight. So if you start your project in the morning, by later evening, you might be ready to go. Otherwise, all else fails, leave it overnight to let it really set up. And then just using some simple rolling techniques, just gonna roll out my clay into a nice thin strip that I can use to wrap around the key ring and the wire.
And this is where, if this is cracking, if this is breaking while you're using it, you're gonna need to add a little water. Next, I'm just going to take off a little chunk and start wrapping my first ring. So I took a little piece of the clay off and I am just going to push it onto the ring and into the wire and fold it over. So I'm just trying to make the space where the ring meets the wire as sturdy as possible. So I'm almost forming a V. So I have this wide section of the two V points at the top over my ring, and then I just have it shaped into a triangle, a V, over my wire, just to connect those two parts. And then you can start covering your wire or start covering your ring next. So I'm just gonna roll this out a little more, tear off a piece, and essentially just push my ring into it. And form it around. And then just using my fingers, mold it around the key ring to make sure I'm keeping my circular opening, but covering all of my metal and adding some dimension my Quidditch field. If you find any area is kind of thin, always grab a little more clay, add it to that spot. It doesn't have to be perfectly smooth, uh, it just adds dimension to your project and character. So get it to the point where it's visually appealing to your eye. I'm pretty happy with that. So now I'm just going to take a little more clay and finish my wire to my end point. So again, it's just tucking it into the wire and then just pinching it around, smoothing it, wrapping it. And kind of joining in any creases, working them together. So that's where I find it tends to want to crack. And there's our hoop. So you do the same step for all three rings. And then let your golden snitch and your rings dry until this is hardened. So you can see that's already much more durable than when it was just the wire and the key ring. And we let those dry. The magic of television, I have one that's already dry. So you can see it's pretty hard. I wouldn't go banging this too much on the surface. It will start to crack. But to help make these a little stronger, I highly recommend using a glue or a Mod Podge to help add a little strength, help fill in the cracks that might be occurring. Make sure that your project doesn't fall apart when you have it. So these have already received a layer of glue. So all I did was use a brush, I took the cap right off my Elmer's glue bottle, dipped it in, coated one side, let it dry, turned it over, coated the other side, let it dry, and I did that for all three. So I have one, two, and three at different heights. The biggest thing to remember is your tallest height. We do not want to be taller than our cloche inside because then you're not going to see your ring. You're going to have trouble putting your dome back on. So the next step is with our cardboard. And for this step, you'll need your pencil and the 
dome of your cloche. So I'm just going to put that onto my cardboard and trace my circle. Next we're going to cut this out, but we don't want to cut right at the line. We want to cut just inside it to give us a little room for it to fit in the base of our cloche. circular as possible. Your moss step will help hide any irregular edges, I promise. My big purpose is just trying to get it to fit in our base. So now I've been, so there's my base and there's my piece. If you make it too snug where this can't fall out, there is a little opening at the bottom can use one of your pieces of wire or unbend a paper clip and push it in in order to get this piece to fall out. We don't want it too snug because we do need to take this in and out potentially. So here is my cardboard piece and this becomes the base to build off of for the project. So all I'm going to do now is kind of eyeball where I want my three rings to be and I want to make sure that my edges aren't past the edge of my cardboard, so when this stands up, I'm not outside the area that my cloche will cover. So I'm just going to go ahead and put a strip over here. Here. Here, offset that one a little bit. And I just keep using the same ring. I'm not sure why I'm grabbing the different ones, but... So then the center keeps these inside. So then I'm just going to use my pencil to punch a hole into my cardboard. So this is just going to help me start getting my wires up through. If you have a small hole punch, by all means use that. But I was just trying to keep it simple with what you probably already have on hand. And that would be a pencil. You could use the tip of a scissor too, but I don't want anybody getting hurt. That. So now I'm going to flip this over because I don't want these raised edges affecting the bottom when it sits. So I am going to flip it over and use these holes to add my Quidditch frames. So the ends have the two wires that I can then spread apart. So I'm going to go ahead and start with the first one, push those down in. And then turn it over, and I'm going to flatten the wires to give it a little more stability. And you could find that that pressure is enough to hold your ring upright. I found it was just a little unsteady, but I wanted to add a little glue around the base to help hold my ring in place. And it's very important to keep it steady with where you want it to be while your hot glue dries. If it's moving around too much, then you're going to find that your ring could start to flop over. So I'm just going to let that one dry and then do the next ring and the next ring.
that these have had a chance to dry, we are ready to move on to the next step. So some of the wire pieces might overhang the side of the cardboard. I'm just going to go ahead and use my scissors and give those a little trim back. Beware of flying wire. So now they'll all be tucked in underneath. So next I'm just going to use my bronze paint to give them all a coat. And we'll do this in fast forward mode as well. So once our rings are dry to the touch, for the most part, we can start with our moss covering around the bottom. So I found that the easiest way to do this was to just cut off little pieces. And shape them around. So I'm going to do a loose half circle. You can always trim around the edges of whatever's extra. So there's a nice section to get you started. Generous amount of glue. Just add on my moss.
while that is drying, I'm just going to go ahead and give a little paint to my gold circle wall to make my Quidditch golden snitch. So the magic of television once again. Give me Quidditch wings. And here is my golden snitch. So since I'm doing the flat effect, I'm actually going to go ahead and snip these wings off. Just give this a little trim. Place the dome on top, kind of squish it down in, and you're done.